Hello guys, this is Pants 36 and today's video is going to be a post mode review of Mini Art's recent Stug 3 O series, which is a prototype of the Sturmgeschutz or Stug 3 vehicle. This kit was actually announced in 2017, but they had to delay it a little bit because they had to do a couple upgrades to their Panzer 3 kit to correct the exhausts and the engine deck. So this kit is actually, I guess they delayed it because they re-released their Panzer 3 OSB, and then of course they re they released this one on the corrected hull, so that's why it waited a year. This came out in about May, so it's fairly recent, and is a very, very good kit. So in this video, I'm going to give you a brief, just kind of like rundown of what the kit's like to build, and then we're going to look at some specific features if I liked, some things I had to correct, and then a couple of things that might, basically just like my thoughts about the build, because I've actually built the kit so I can give you a proper review instead of looking at it in the box and all the plastic on the sprues. So to start, I think we'll just kind of take an overall look at the vehicle, and I'll point out a couple of things that I've left off and kind of things I've done to the tank. So first of all, you can probably see that I've replaced the, um, the antenna rod with a piece of styrene rod, which is why it's white. The kit styrene piece or whatever, the plastic piece for the um, antenna there, was, it was fine, but about the same thickness as that plastic piece actually, but there was a bunch of cleanup points on it, so I just didn't want to clean it up and just cut it off and replaced it, because that was easier. I also don't have the tracks on the kit, that's because the tracks are model casting style workable tracks, and they're a little bit fiddly, and I haven't built them all yet, and I might just not build them because I'm not in the mood for tracks at the moment. But they're good. I'll show them even in a second, actually. I've also left a couple of the parts off, like a couple of tools here, removable. Um, there's a couple of the interior components are also not glued in, so I can paint them easier later. And most notably, there's no piece right here over top of the gun, because on any Stug 3 kit, leave that piece off until the very end, because you're going to have a hell of a time getting the gun back in with that piece on there. Though this kit, it might be possible. Dragon kit's definitely not. So I figured we start from the bottom and just kind of work our way up. So to begin, of course, we're going to start with the tracks here. Tracks, like I said, are model cast style workable tracks, which means that you get a whole bunch of tracks on sprues. They're kind of in mini sprue sets of 12. And you basically have to cut them up and, or cut them off the sprue and do a little bit of cleanup on the ends. It's not too major. It goes by pretty quick once you're kind of in the zone and maybe watching something in the background. And then you have a little jig which lines up nicely for you which is provided in the kit, and then you have to put the pins in. The pins are, are uh, plastic parts, and they're basically just a whole line. It's basically a section of sprue with all the pins on it. And since you have the tracks and the jig, about eight of them at a time, you can just take a whole section of that and just kind of stick it right in. It lines up all the pins for you. You cut the, the pins off the actual kind of sprue, just go with your cutters, and just go cut, 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 cut. And then you can add glue if you want, though I find they usually to sit in there pretty well and I'm a little bit nervous about glue because I don't want them to not work. And they actually actually work very very well. They're a little bit stiff, but I don't expect that Panzer three tracks at this scale they're very very light so I don't expect them to sag on their own. They're they're too light for that so they'll, they'll stick where you put them I guess. You can kind of set the sag yourself by poking them a little bit once you've got them lined up and they'll stay how they are. And I especially like how they are actually workable, because that looks cool. It's also easier to actually get them on and off for painting purposes as well. Which is kind of important because I had to glue the wheels on the tank. We'll go over that next. So to attach the bogies to the actual um, suspension components themselves, the bogies, the, the thing that holds two wheels together by the way, you have like a half cylinder piece in the back of the bogey, which then you're supposed to glue to this piece that's also a half cylinder that is located that you have to put inside the actual suspension part earlier but not glue in and when you glue them together you get a full piece which then can move up and down and it's kind of I mean it'd work but I didn't feel like doing all that and I figured it was probably gonna break or something like that so I just didn't even bother putting in that piece on the inside the gray piece there and just glued it on I glued the actual bogey piece right onto that made sure it was straight and it was fine also found that the wheels were a little bit, um, I think I'd just say loose on the actual um, bogey piece itself. So they weren't lining up perfectly. So I just said screw it and glued them all on to the actual bogey. So the wheels are all glued on except for the sprocket and the idler. But, I mean, it shouldn't be too hard because they're off so you can probably get tracks on and off. Anyways, and if I go with the workable ones, it'll be even easier. So yeah, the wheels are all glued on, but I don't really mind it. But these are still removable, which will make track painting and assembling all fine. The actual suspension itself was very, very well done. 
a couple of the components had a little bit of flash on them, which, I mean, um, that's probably the only area where flash was present in the kit in any noticeable area, or like more than I'd expect in any kit. A couple of the components, like I think these guys here, and also some of the uh, components that are down there, you can't even really see them. They had like, you know, a little bit of flash or kind of thick seam lines on them. And it was just, you clean them up and then you realize you can't even see them anyway, so whatever. What I mainly liked though was that all of these little connecting rods and everything like that fit together very, very well. And everything, it fit together well and it fit on well so it kind of lined up. We didn't have any misaligning. Everything fit on snugly and nice and square and everything like that. And a lot of these pieces of the connecting rods and everything like that, they kind of fit into each other. And then could, they kind of snapped in there or locked in. And then they could actually rotate around and pivot. So you could kind of put it all together and kind of leave it workable until you got the bogey in. And you could kind of bend it down, pop it into the bogey, and then glue everything together. So it was all very well done. It kind of, I mean, it looks like the most fragile suspension ever. But it, um, it fits together well. I didn't have anything break on me. I like it a lot. Next up, we'll look at the front of the, um, the hull area. So as you can see, there's plenty of photo etch here. Photo etch in this kit, I liked it a lot personally. What I found was, I guess my thought I'll say is that there was photo etch basically everywhere you needed photo etch for the tank to look good. Um, but then there weren't, the only downside is I guess, there weren't um, plastic options. So if you are if you didn't have the dexterity or the eyesight or you just, or the, I guess the patience to do all the photo etch, you, you kind of couldn't because there's no plastic options you can put on instead. Which um, I guess Dragon often do, in their at least their Panzer IVs sometimes I guess, some of their kits at least. So I mean that's fine for me because I I love photo watch in the areas like this where it's visible and it's kind of easy. You just got to do a couple of basic folds and everything like that. It was fine for me, but some people might have a little trouble with that. In which case, I mean, what can you do? You might have to leave off a couple of smaller parts, but bigger ones you can probably handle. So the photo watch they give you is basically the whole headlight section here, apart from the the back. The back is one plastic piece and you have the front part, two kind of brackety hingy pieces here and also a tiny tiny little wing nut, They're all photo etch. They have the um, the bend lines already molded into them so I actually just, I don't have any fancy photo etch tools, I just use a couple pairs of small pliers and just kind of bend it or use the table and a knife and just kind of, it's not pretty but it works. <laughs> it was all pretty easy to fold up honestly. Same thing for the NoTech light base here, it's just kind of like a, because you got to fold it down and then out, kind of like a U-shape with a little flange at the bottom on both sides. And also the same kind of thing for the the mount for the siren or horn or whatever it is. Also a photo etch for two little parts on the transmission covers here. Not sure why, but looks good. And then you also have tiny, tiny little, I guess you might be able to see it better. There's a little tiny brackety piece. It's very, very small. But it's right in there. It, it's where the, um, the this retention spring piece, kind of the hooky thing there, which mounts onto the back of the um, fender, locks on the, to the mudguard itself, because in real life the mudguards could be released and folded up. Um, naturally, you can't do that on the back. Uh, I don't know why, but you can't do that on the back. But on the front, you that, that should give you the option to give you a different length um, retention -y piece here, and you can actually fold these up. It looks good, but there's, there's two pin marks on the back of these mudguards, which aren't... They're not like you could get rid of them in two minutes. You gotta fill them a little bit because they're a little bit uh, sunken and sand it smooth, but I didn't feel like that. But at least they give you the option to, and it would look kind of cool because you can often see most early Panther 3s, they have those fold up for some reason. I don't know why, but it looks kind of cool. They also give you photo etch chains, which I like because I've never seen this before, but it should be there. There's a photo etch chain that goes from the bottom of this little key here, which kind of locks into the actual little mount here and basically they could pull that out, put the tow cable in there and lock it in place if they need to tow the vehicle. There's a little photo chain they give you which goes from the bottom of that to the actual base of the um, I guess the mount itself. I might go with the photo watch piece because I like how they give it to me or I might just actually go with a little tiny chains that I've already bought from my Stug 3s to replace them anyways because those probably look a little better but I kind of like the photo watch chain they give me because they gave it to me and I'm happy about that, so I might go with that. It looks pretty good, but it's just a little bit flat because it's a photo wedge piece, but I might be able to make it work. Back to the whole front area here. I want to point out that the only inaccuracy in the kit that I could find was with regard to the front hatches, and it was very easy to fix. So photos of these vehicles are very, are very scarce, basically. There's only five of them made. They're prototypes to see if they could just fit the gun in the, in the Panzer III and make it work. 
and then after they figured out that yeah it can work they use them as training tanks and these they were built in 1938 so it's very very early not many photos of them and they're all kind of bad quality but what I was able to notice was in one of the photos that the hatches are in different configuration I tell you to put on for example the hatch on this side you can probably see that there is a little L piece here which is the actual back half of the hinge for the um, I guess the latch or the handle that you can kind of twist and unlock and open the hatch with so it's as you can see it's on this half of the hatch and this half there's nothing it's just a flat piece they tell you to do the same thing over here so you have the the L shape hatch piece you know over here and the flat hatch on this side that's incorrect the L shape guys should be on the inside so basically the the, the hatches with the actual hinge for the latch should be both on the inside and then the plain hatches on the outside. Now, that's only on one of the vehicles. I believe it was vehicle B. I can send you guys the photo if you want. Just message me on Facebook. Um, but on lots of Stug 3s, I've got tons of Stug 3 photos. There's tons, there's ones where you can see them both together on the inside, both on the outside, both you know in any configuration on other Stug 3s like you know Bs, Cs, Gs, everything like that. So it kind of depends on when the vehicle was made and I guess just kind of what they felt like putting the hatches in. It probably didn't, probably wasn't standardized. They probably just put the hatches in and whatever side they put the hinge on or the, the latch on, that's how it was. But I guess I noticed this, so I put it like that because that's what one of them was like at least. So it's more accurate, I guess, than, than not knowing. But yes, that's the only inaccuracy I could find in the whole kit. Though, like I said, photos are kind of scarce. The gun is very, very good. They give you the actual barrel itself and the sleeve behind it. They're one piece on the sprue. I guess they're kind of small, so it's kind of easy to do that, but it's much better than having halves. And there was very, very little uh, seam line on them, and the, the attachment points of the sprue were... I, I don't think I had an issue. I don't think there's one actually on, visible on the gun. There's one here, um, but it was it was all pretty well done. I only had to clean up one point well to camouflage it. It's always hard to clean up uh, sprue attachment points on round parts. You, do, you always end up with a little bit of flat spot. It's a bother, but this is well done. The gun itself looks also very good, and there's nice welds on the back of the actual reciprocator housing here as well. The instructions are not very clear about the attachment of the headlight, or the, the not shrouded headlight at least. Which is nice, they give you in a clear piece, so it's always a good, you can just mask off the end and you have a clear headlight. I like that a lot. But they just tell you to kind of put it on. Now I want you to note that there's actually a little base piece here, which I, when I looked at it I thought that the base piece just mounted flat in the fender. And then the headlight was off that, but the base piece actually mounts at a 45 degree angle. You can definitely see it there. It goes, it touches the fender here, and that kind of angles upwards. And then it kind of lines up with this wire piece that's molded into the fender, which I'm happy they gave me the wires finally in that kit molded on. And then that kind of that kind of goes up a little bit into the bottom of that 45 degree plate. So, like I said, I'm not very well showing the instructions because they kind of show it from an angle like this, and they're just like put the headlight on, but um. Just note that if you're building the kit, it should be like that. Looking at the fenders, the actual tool clamps they give you are very, very well done. They're small, they're, I guess you could say in scale, though, of course, the actual little handles or latches themselves are thick because they're plastic and not photo etched, so uh, they're basically as good as you can get. They look good. I like them a lot. Oddly enough, they give you a photo etched piece for the little handle, whatever, the, you know, the actual piece that comes off that you twist to unlock the hatch. They give you a photo wedge one for the shovel clamp, but not for any of the other clamps, including the the axe, the crowbar here, and also in the rear of the tank, there's also a um, starter crank one as well. So I don't know why they gave me a photo wedge one for one of them, but you can't even see it because it's behind the, the gun cleaning uh, rods here, so I mean, it doesn't really matter. Um, it would be nice if they would have given me photo etch for all of them, just the actual latch piece itself, because doing an actual full clamp is a pain in the butt. But they look good enough, so I'm fine with it. I wasn't in the mood for excessive photo etch. They give you enough, and this kit looks really, really good. Now, the tools themselves are also just kind of well done. They're small, they're in scale, minimal seam lines on them, especially the, the actual fire extinguishers here, which are very crisp. The actual, kind of like the, um, I guess the latch here and the handles on the fire extinguisher, and the way it kind of recesses in there with the actual head, the fire extinguisher mounting inside the actual kind of like mount around it. It's all very, very well done. It's very crisp, very deep details. It looks like it's more than one part, but it's actually just one big plastic piece. So, very, very cool. 
And on the back of the tank here, we have more photo details, which I liked a lot. So we have little tiny little kind of pieces there that just go on the, I guess the latch for the, uh, the I guess, stowage boxes or toolboxes, whatever they are on the back here. That looks very, very good. Uh, just one piece on there, but it really improves detail a lot. And as you can see, we also have a whole bunch of photo wetch for all the grills. So there's ones on the grills up here, one on the grills over there, and also ones on the grills over here. Lots of photo wetch. But it was well done. Uh, the actual, these guys here are all actually one, they're, it's basically four pieces. You've got four long photo wedge pieces which have little kind of slots. So they, you just put the whole thing in, you just kind of slide the whole thing up. And if you line up nicely in the center, which is pretty easy with a knife, you can just kind of twist it from the top. It does the whole length, you know, just in one go, so you don't have to put four pieces in. Uh, same thing over here on the back, they're one piece, you just pop in the bottom. They uh, over here is actually individual pieces, so you have to put you know six in per vent, and they were a little bit tricky. These ones were I think a little bit you know like maybe a quarter of a millimeter too long, so I had to kind of sand on a couple of them to get them to fit in nicely, and some of them came out a little bit wonky. The jacks, yeah, jacks and go. Maybe I'll see that these ones aren't as straight as the rest of them. They're a little bit fiddly to get in because like I said, they're a little bit long, but. They do fit in there nicely. They have little kind of slots that they mount up into in the actual plastic themselves. And they look better than any plastic ever could there. We also have photo watch for the tow cable clamps and I don't even know what these are called. Let's call these the mounts and these ones the clamps. So this is a little bit wrong because I lost part of one of the clamps. So there should be four clamps and four of the mounts. Um, but like I said, I lost a part of one of the clamps, so I just to kind of change this arrangement a little bit to make it make more sense. There should be more of the clamps right here and here, like with these guys. There should be two more of them, one there and one there. And then this one should be, uh, I think, up there, and the other one should be down here or something like that. Um, but I kind of had to, since I lost one, I kind of changed it around a little bit to make it make a little more sense. And they are a little bit fiddly. The, um, the clamps themselves are actually two pieces. You have a bottom piece, you have to fold into a U shape, and then the top guy, you have to kind of do a half circle and then a flat section but they actually have little kind of um, keys and grooves so they fit together. I mean, they kind of lock in a little bit, but they're photo wedge and they're pretty weak. Uh, but they look good. They look better than plastic wood. Uh, and these guys here were actually especially tricky for me to fold up because they're kind of like, um, you can probably see better over here. It's, it's flat in the bottom, then it does a half curve up on one end, and then on the other end it goes straight up like an L shape. So, uh, I mean, it's a little bit tricky, but I managed to get them all folded up. A little bit stressful, but they came out pretty good. And like I uh, said before many times, I don't have any fancy photo wedge clamps or tools. I just kind of use a hobby knife and a pair of pliers and stuff like that and kind of just bend them up. I've gotten pretty good at it. Uh, but, I mean, I mean, I guess since I was able to do it with basically no tools, it shouldn't be too hard to get them looking half decent. Also, they don't actually give you the, a tow cable. They give you the ends, like the little kind of like steel part with the loop, but the actual cable itself is not given in the kit. Don't know why, uh, and it's not a mistake, it's actually not given in the kit. It specifically says in the kit, scratch build the actual cable piece. So, I don't know, you probably get a spare. I've got tons of dragon spares, but I'm going to leave it off on this one since it's a training vehicle. So, I mean, I don't think they'd have everything up on there anyways. So, on the rear of the tank, these two exhausts would be mounted. They actually kind of fit in nicely. They, the, the pipe kind of goes down into that little shieldy piece and they actually have a nice little square mounting piece on there. So it all fits together nicely. These were well done. They are molded in halves as you can probably see the little bit of a remaining seam there but I'm pretty sure that's sanded smooth. Um, and even though they're molded in halves, the actual exhaust pipe itself is not halves. It is actually, um, it comes as kind of as part of one of the halves. So the two body parts go together as a half but the actual pipe itself is one nice big tube so there's no you know seam line or filling issues on the pipe itself which would be a pain but it's all well done and they fit together very very well so the cleanup was you know pretty easy and it's an exhaust pipe so you can just kind of sand it and mess it up a little bit these get dented up it looks really good and it's actually like a separate kind of almost like shieldy piece you can see over top there molded in very very well and the, and the actual exhaust pipe on the bottom also has a very very nice attachment point in there and there's very very minimal you know like flash and seam lines on any of these rounded pieces 
the exhaust and the engine deck layout is actually what they've corrected in this kit from the previous Panther 3B that there was incorrect. So that's all good now and they're mostly given on new sprues. Uh, the jack here is well done. It's kind of a typical dragon style. I guess it's like nine pieces or whatever. You get the two body parts, the actual kind of um, handle pieces, two pieces, and you get the ends go on, then the clamps. But it's more detailed than dragon ones, especially in the um, kind of the department of the clamps, which are more in scale. That you have little hints details in uh, molded on, which is very, very good. I left it separate for painting, and also if you glue it on, you can't get the superstructure off because the actual handle on the back side, right there, the handle piece, interferes with the superstructure. So don't glue it on like I kind of did, so I kind of cut it off. They actually give you two different jacks. There's a different style of jack, which has more bolts and a more triangular end piece over here, which I guess locks on the ground, I guess the foot of the jack. And the, that jack is for if you want to build vehicles C or B. If you want to build vehicle A, you go with this jack. I don't know how they can tell that. There must be some kind of photos. Also, if you want to go with vehicle A, you go with the hull front without the binocular holes here for the driver's periscope, not the gunner's periscope. Don't listen to everything here on the internet. Um, and they also give you different markings. So there's different decals, different crosses, stuff like that. And there's the big A, B, or C on the side of the vehicle here. There were also... There's five vehicles, that's only accounting for three, so I don't know what happened to the other two, but I haven't seen any photos of anything else, so... Maybe there's more photos of these vehicles out there, I'm not sure, but... It'd be kind of cool maybe if one of them was a little bit different. I've set this up, though, as you can tell, for vehicle A, which has no crosses, this jack, and that front plate. They also give you a nice photo etch um, mount here for the toolbox above the jack, which I've left separate, sorry, the jack block. And I've left it separate so it can pop off because then I want to be able to paint the wood on the jack block easily and it's going to be easier if I can just pop that guy off later. They also give us some nice little hinges or I can never say the word right but these are like you know hatches or latches or handles whatever you want to call them. They're just basic photo watch parts to give them a little kind of jank, a little 9 degree bend and a bend back and you get two of these up here and you also get two more if you want to open up the front hatches here um, but I didn't want to open them because there's nothing inside there. But uh, I guess you get spares if you want to open up some other dragon stug hatches that don't have these parts molded on. So removing the superstructure is a little bit tricky on this kit. I don't like exactly how they did it, but basically you have a back plate, which is separate, and then you have kind of like a superstructure with the roof molded on. So I would have preferred if I could have left the superstructure on and left the roof removable but I can't because the roof is molded onto it. So to kind of remove the whole superstructure work from there, which isn't the worst thing ever, but it makes it a little bit tricky to kind of, I guess, take it apart for painting. Now what I probably should have done is not glued the back plate onto the superstructure, because now if I'm going to take the whole thing out, I can do it here without breaking off some photo wedge. It pops out, I mean, it's, it's all really well, but, well done, but the whole back piece here is kind of, a pain and also the seat here interferes with the actually um, the seat on the gun if you keep pulling them out they're going to hit each other not when it's all in place it's all fine but if you keep pulling them out the, the seats knock together and then um it's a little bit tricky to get the gun in here so i would have preferred if i would have uh, left the back wall in the kit and glued it to the to the actual you know where it would be and then left the superstructure and roof combo separate so i could have taken that out because that wouldn't have given me that seat interference issue Superstructure itself looks very, very good. You got nice uh, welds and rivets on there. The welds are kind of sticking up over here, which I think is accurate, and then they're kind of sunken all over here. It all fits together well, but like I was saying, I would have wished the roof would be separate from you know the front and the sides of the superstructure. Uh, this hatch here can be posed open, and then you can have the periscope actually sticking out. They give you a clear piece for the gunner's periscope, which is very, very nice. I think I've, I've got it down. I'm not sure if I've glued it in there, but I think I'm going to leave that closed. And just leave these hatches open. So I'm going to close the other half of that one. It's just for painting right now. They also give you MP40 machine guns, which go on the two locating holes in there. They give you one for this side and one for the other side. Very good. Dragon doesn't give you that except for on their F8 kits. And there are some nice, kind of just see like boxes and stuff molded inside there. And you also get the seat for the commander here, which has a nicely detailed, you know, lowering and raising mechanism, though it is actually fixed in space. Uh, in place, sorry. And you also got nice welds on here. The interior, I like it a lot. It's basically the same as what you get on any dragon kit. 
um, but the detail is actually better. This radio also goes inside the superstructure. I um, left it separately because I want to paint it, and it's going to be painted painted if I glue it inside the sponson box. But it goes inside the upper superstructure I was just showing you, and that kind of boxy thing on the commander's side. And this is very well done. And they actually give me the little handly piece here as a separate handle piece instead of just this blob like they do on the dragon kits. So I approve of this. Looks good. All I'm going to do is add a little bit of wiring with some old little fine headphone wire and it will be fine. But the dials and everything and like that handle is better molded than the dragon kits. So I like it a lot. So like I was saying, the interior they give you is basically what you get in Dragon Stoke 3 kit, which is you get the gun mount, the gun, and then like the seats for the commander and the gunner and stuff like that. And then the back wall with some details on it, radios, that's about it. So most of that's in the superstructure I just showed you. The actual rest of it here is just kind of like a floor. I don't think you should be able to see that, so I'm probably going to have to glue some kind of a, like a piece over there. I'm not sure, maybe you could in real life, but it seems kind of weird. And there's a couple of pin marks on the inside there, which are actually raised, so I'll just scrape them down. Though I doubt you can probably see most of them with the gun in place through the little hatches. Also, what I'm a little bit concerned about is where's the, the drive shaft? Because the engine's over here, and the tank drives from the front. So how does the, you know, like the, the power go from the back to the front? Now the Dragon Kits, mold on the back of the superstructure is actually a big kind of like boxy thing that comes forward here. And in real life that's where it goes through. It's, in, it's underneath the actual gun itself. On this kit, there isn't anything. So I'm going to have to either make a box, or I think I have a Dragon Stug that I didn't use the interior of. So I might just be able to kind of steal it from that, cut that boxy piece out and glue it in there. That's the only thing that really bothers me about the interior apart from being unsure if you should actually be able to see that in there. Um, but yeah, I mean once you get the gun in there I probably can't even see that down there anyways, but it's a little bit kind of, you know, you kind of wonder how they missed that because the engine's back here, but the tank goes from up there, so there should be some way of connecting it. <laughs> and here we have the gun kind of breech mount everything itself. There's also a seat for the commander I've had to leave separate because it interferes with the, um, or sorry, the seat for the gunner which I've had to leave separate because it interferes with a seat for the commander. Um, so I have to leave that separate. I'm going to have to actually mount it in through the hatch at the top. So don't do what I did and leave the back plate glued to the to the tank and leave this, the rest separate. That should be fine. The gun itself mounts in there very nicely. It has a good mount on the trunnion. And it actually is basically what you get in Dragon Kits, but they actually give you nice welds on it and more fine details. And what I like is that you can actually leave the actual whole breech separate if I can get it out. There we go. On the Dragon Kits, the mount here has the full ring. So then when you actually put the, you know, the super, sorry, the gun inside there, it locks it in place. On this one, those half other crescents there are separate, so I've glued them onto this piece, and so it can easily come separately, and I'll be able to paint the breech up and everything like that a little more easily than I would on a Dragon Kit. And also the whole kind of mechanism up here for the front and how this mounts into the back of the um, the gun itself. This bit. It fits together much better than any Dragon kit. So I approve greatly of the more detailed and better fitting interior components, even though you can't see most of them. And of course you have some options, like I think you can put the breech up and down. This piston here was a little bit fiddly. Um, there's also a second piece that comes off the bottom. I just sliced it off because it was interfering a little bit with something but you can't see it anyways because it just actually goes on the inside of this plate kind of back in there. So the interior, like I said, very good. And the detail, better than what I'm used to. Which is always a good surprise. Like, it looks really, really good. Most of this just kind of mold on the Dragon Kit big blobs or it's less detailed or not even there. But here, looks very, very good. So the whole gun breach, everything that's on the inside there, doesn't actually fit positively enough, like kind of lock into the actual kind of gun mount on the floor. Not well enough for me to be able to wiggle the superstructure on without it just kind of coming apart. So it'll be fine. It'll, it'll all line up nicely, but I'll have to glue it in. I don't want to glue it until I paint it. So I just want to show you like how much of that you'll be able to see anyways. Um, so we're missing some interior detail, like wiring, a couple of parts in the back, and mainly the ammunition boxes down in the front and stuff like that, but you really, and of course that big boxy thing I was talking about where the transmission um, or the drive shaft would go through. 
but you cannot really see you know that much inside there anyway so with the gun breach in there as well that basically fills up the whole space all I'm really gonna do is make something for that cover of the uh, drive shaft it's I like it a lot the interiors they give you in these kits it's the same thing with dragon ones it's basically all you need it's what you can see through the hatches and it's not too much that it gets to be a pain but it's you know it's a good interior especially if you put figures in there you, you really can't see any of it anyways and right in there is where the radio would go so it's nice and visible with that good detailing so I'm just gonna put some wiring on it like I said and it will look very very good so that pretty much wraps up our uh, our review of the kit overall fit was very very good minimal flash only really flash a couple of parts you know a major flash only parts on the bogies and you couldn't really see it anyways once you got everything cleaned up and put together uh, welds all look very very good good rivet detail only inaccuracy was I think I had to just flip around so it was very very easy and then uh, the full watch in the kit like I keep saying I like it a lot because it's basically everything you need to make the kit look good if you want to super detail it of course you need more but from like just a standpoint like this for a good easy build you can do in like a week or so it's all the photo wash that I think you know that you'd want or that you need and it, it really just adds detail to all the really fine pieces um, I guess that also could be downside like I said before they don't give you plastic options for any of the photo wash parts so if you can't handle photo wash you're gonna have some missing parts in your kit so for that reason I obviously wouldn't recommend this as somebody's first kit but if you've done a couple of maybe like a dragon smart kit and you've handled some photo wash um, most of this photo etch is just bending 90 degree angles. The only thing that's a little bit tricky is the tow cable stuff on the rear, which I guess you could probably leave off because it's a prototype vehicle. So, you know, it's pretty easy. The, the main points are like, you know, hatches or, la sorry, latches for the hatches, mounts for a couple parts, and the vents. And they're just 90 degree bends or nothing at all. Just basic clean up and then put them in place. Super glue, very, very good. The overall detail is very nice. The plastic is very, very fine very good molding on all the um, tread pattern rivets welds like I said earlier and then actually the tool clamps themselves are very very fine and I mean it just it looks good like when you look at the kit like this it just it looks well, well done and so I'm happy with it um, and, and I guess I could call this a post but every, even though I haven't built the whole thing a lot of parts are left separate which kind of sucks for the video but I hope you guys understand that and the tracks like I said not really in the mood to do a full set of model cat or two sets of model castings right now so I may go with dragon tracks I've left over and the narrow earlier ones or I might bite the bullet and build the whole length which would make it easier because I left the wheels on like I said glued on um, but yes overall thoughts of the kit like I just said it's good don't build as your first kit but if it's your fourth kit and you've done a couple of dragon smart kits something like that you'll have no trouble with this at all I like it a lot. It gets my Stoke seal of approval because it's accurate and it looks cool. It was fun to build and it's got what I always like, which is, I've said this five times already, photo wedge where you need it. So, yes, thanks for watching very much, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you to all my Patreon supporters and my PayPal supporter. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to build this up or, or, sorry, paint this up. But what I will do is I will definitely have a video where I show you how to paint the interior on a Stoke 3 on this one because I have done a couple of Stoke 3 interiors, I know how to do it, and I've got a couple of comments recently about people saying, you know, how can I do a Stoke interior, or just a, kind of like a, an interior in general, so um, I can go through that, how to do a Panzer interior, a couple of basic tricks there, a couple of colors, but it'll, it'll be pretty easy and pretty cool, and then I'll probably paint this up in a, um, a camel pattern, because I'm not sure if these were just gray, or gray with brown stripes, because 1938, they probably had brown stripes, so I'll probably have you know, a full weathering video on this one too because I want to do that more more often for you guys. If you like this kit, I'm certain you can get it in Canada now because we have uh, Juno models supplying these in hobby shops. Thank you very much to them, by the way. They supplied me with this kit for free. It's very nice of them. Yes, so like I said, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next one. Happy modeling.